guys, how's it going? How's the fishing? Ah, uh, fishing's alright. Catching's a little slow though. Well, if the catching's slow, why are you still here? Because there's bugs on the rock. See? I never noticed that before. Well, let's go take a closer look. Let's have a look. I don't see any bugs. That's because they're all over here. I wonder why that is. Let's go investigate in the lab. We'll meet you there. Welcome back. First, we're going to discuss a case of a uniform channel, which will have a constant cross-sectional area, velocity, and depth. Now this isn't something that occurs very often in nature, but let's see what happens anyways. In a case such as this, we're going to have uniform flow lines, which will be traveling parallel to our bed and our water surface. Next we'll consider a case where we have an obstruction to our flow. Here, we'll put a rock into our channel, which is sitting on the bed. And as you can see, the flow traveling along the boundary will separate and travel over the rock of the laminar flow, leaving a void at the downstream end. This void will be filled with recirculating flow, which is traveling at a lower velocity. Now these flow reversals will pull anything directly downstream of the rock back towards it instead of flushing it downstream. When this flow traveling over the rock meets with these flow reversals, which are traveling in an opposite direction, rotational motion will be imparted, which will result in a turbulent wake downstream of the rock. These properties can be described by the Reynolds number. Reynolds number is the ratio of the inertial forces to the viscous forces. Inertial forces are described by the density, velocity, and characteristic length over which the fluid travels. Viscous forces are described by the viscosity, and assuming constant density, kinematic viscosity can be used. Inertial forces work to keep flow at constant velocity, while viscous forces work to stop flow. High Reynolds numbers indicate dominance of inertial forces and turbulent flow. Low Reynolds numbers indicate dominance of viscous forces and laminar flow. Let's explain this using some laboratory simulations. Using this flume, we simulated flow over a riverbed. As you can see, flow lines are converging behind the rock to where the caddisflies and other aquatic insects forge. Food traveling around the side and over the top is being flushed into the region behind the rock. Flow reversals prolong the period during which caddisflies can forge for this food. Turbulent flows behind the rock result in mixing of air and water thereby increasing dissolved oxygen for consumption by these insects. The insects forge in a region of increased stability due to reduced velocity. Although the Reynolds number is low on top of the rock, the low velocity reversals directly downstream provide increased protection, pulling the bug back towards the rock in a quiet pocket of water. Location of caddisflies on the rock is important in water quality analysis by means of benthic analysis. Benthic macroinvertebrates, like the caddisflies, are good indicators of water quality. Collector species, such as caddisflies, crustaceans, leeches, and mollusks, are often found in environments of pristine water quality. Game fish prey on these insect species, and that's how a fisherman knows the big one is lurking around. Rolling, yeah. Rolling low. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Side Fishing. Using facts from the book to help you set the hook. Tune in next week to learn how to keep drag from dragging down your fishing game. Rolling on a river. Rolling on the river.